Hi guys, so by now you probably have heard about the baby formula shortage. Now the most accepted reason for this is the pandemic and supply chain issues. But some conspiracy minded people believe that there might be a more purposeful and darker reason behind the shortage. This is not the first time that formula has been in the news. In the 1970s, Nestle was accused of killing babies. So before we get into that story, let's look at breastfeeding really quick and give this little disclaimer. You know, some women just can't breastfeed. As natural as it is, it just happens. It could be her health, could be that the baby won't latch, could be that she's, you know, taking medication. There could be a variety of reasons why a woman cannot breastfeed. And there is a lot of bullying that goes on around this topic. If you are a new mom and you can't breastfeed, then stay out of Facebook groups, you know, where they talk about breastfeeding in a way that if you're not doing it, you are absolutely criticized, you are put down, really you are just made to be a terrible mother. And I know for myself, my middle son was a preemie and he was born at only 34 weeks. When he started losing those crucial ounces and he was already so tiny, the decision had to be made. He wasn't latching and we ultimately with, you know, the hospital decided that it would be best to go ahead and start supplementing formula. Well, he took to the bottle right away and then he would not go back to breast. So the lactation specialist had sat with me and she said, you know, this happens unfortunately because the breast is a lot more work for the baby. So if somebody would just hand you your food versus working for it, wouldn't you just, you know, want the, the easy way out? And, you know, there, there's a lot more to breastfeeding than one would think. I mean, you would just think that this is just so all natural that it would be as easy as anything, but it's not always that way. So let's be compassionate to the women who can't. Now, at one time, of course, breastfeeding was the absolute go-to. I mean, there was no other options. Over time, of course, you know, women started to figure things out on their own. I can remember my grandmother telling me that, you know, when she lived in Newfoundland in a very remote place, any woman that for whatever reason couldn't breastfeed, they would just give the newborn baby goat milk. <laughs> you know, I mean, women figured it out. God bless, God bless the moms. They will just figure it out, right? But then a solution came and that was store-bought formula that promised to have all the benefits of breast milk and more. Now, I think that when we look at culturally, around, especially in the 1980s, it was almost considered like, you know, if you had money, you bought formula, right? Because it was very pricey. And that's, you know, women were much more in the workforce and they, you know, they didn't have the time for breastfeeding as much. And it was just, it's just what people did. They gave formula. That was really there was not a whole lot of talk about breastfeeding as much and if anything it was like poorer women were breastfeeding and now it's like the total opposite right it's the, the really good moms all breastfeed and the lazy terrible moms give formula so it's just it's interesting to see you know things how they have shifted in the perception of baby formula and i think a lot of that too you know um, i've read some articles on this and it makes sense is that as women entered the workforce and became more professional, they started to maybe feel, um, even if subconsciously, that you know leaving work to go breastfeed would put them in not as professional of a standing, especially if they worked in a more male-oriented you know company. And of course, it was um, it. I don't want to say the sexualization of the breast, but, you know, I think women felt uncomfortable with that, right? Especially in public places. But now it is much different. You know, it is welcomed in most places. You know, people are really starting to be very open and um, accepting of women just being very natural and, and recognizing it for what it is. She's feeding her child. So leave her alone. 
And, you know, women are doing that. I've seen women do it in restaurants. I've seen women do it in parks. Uh, but, again, let's get back to the formula. So, in the 1970s, Nestle decided that it would be a great marketing strategy to go into very poor places in Asia, Africa, and parts of South America. And they would start promoting their product to these women. And what they did was they sent in women who were dressed in nurses' outfits. Not all of them were allegedly the nurses. It was like a marketing campaign. It was just like sales girls dressed as nurses. So they went in and they started talking to, you know, all of these women. And allegedly, according to some of those women, they were lied to and they were basically told that formula had more nutritional value to it because the breast lacked certain things and the babies would need like extra um, food and extra things to make up those nutritional deficits. Whereas the formula would give them everything that they needed. Now keep in mind that many of these places did not even have water that wasn't contaminated. So these women had to use water to mix formula and they were using unclean contaminated water. And because some of these women, one woman in particular, who was living on $7 a week to feed an entire family, stated that, you know, she would put extra water in, sometimes like up to three times the amount that she was supposed to. So Nestle was doing these things. And at the same time, they were going to hospitals and they weren't the only company. And they would have the hospitals promote their formula by giving them gifts, you know, they would pay for construction, they would pay for new furniture, they would give them free formula, free bottles for their baby units in exchange for them handing out welcome baby packets that had their formula in it. So as far as the women that, that were being given these free samples, they eventually end up now in a situation where they were relying on the formula. And apparently that came around for two reasons. One, they were made to feel so bad about the way that they were feeding their babies that they were no longer producing milk because under stress, you don't produce milk. And also they were waiting because they were now feeding these samples and things to the baby. They were waiting too long to breastfeed and so their milk was drying up. And now they're reliant on this product that they really can't afford. And as a result of them mixing all this extra water and doing all these things and not really being able to afford it, it was alleged that millions of babies became mal malnourished and died. So this was exposed, and I believe it was 1974. So this article came out, and it was called The Baby Killer. Well, at least that's the way that it was written here in the U.S. In some places overseas, it actually was titled Nestle Kills Babies. And they exposed what Nestle was doing. Nestle sued and they actually won. But despite the fact that they won, they were told by the judge that they had to reform their marketing practices and they were no longer allowed to continue to, you know, go out and, and promote it in the way that they were doing, which was a little shady. And that baby formula companies could not give gifts to hospitals in exchange for them promoting their formula. And I read this and I thought, well, that's really funny because I'm absolutely certain that just in 2016 that I got a welcome package with those little ready-made formula things in it. Um, the ones that you don't have to add water, the like the on-the-go packets. I'm like certain that I got those in my welcome packet at the hospital. So, and I've even gotten the free samples in the mail. Like somehow they just like know you had a baby <laughs> and you know, you start getting these free samples in the mail. Allegedly, they're not supposed to do that. So yeah, that's the story behind Nestle. So Nestle did win the lawsuit, but they were made to change their, um, their marketing strategies, if you really want to call it a strategy. And when you look at these women, it is really sad what happened to them because these were women that were very poor 
And when they saw these Western women came, you know, come waltzing in, you know, these professional women with their nurses outfits on, of course, they were going to be hanging on every word these women said, they were going to believe them that, you know, they knew what was best for them and their babies and every mother wants to do right by their baby. So they fell for it immediately, you know, hook, line and sinker, and they found themselves in horrific situations where they could not feed their babies as a result of something as simple as being marketed to from, you know, this company from overseas. And I don't really know what Nestle's goal was because you would think that they would know that these women were not long-term going to be able to afford baby formula. It's expensive. It's very expensive. So I, I wonder, and I don't know this, this is just me wondering. I know that there, at least here in the U.S., there are some programs for women that can't afford baby formula, and it's called Women, women Infant Children, so WIC is W-I-C, and they will help women buy formula. You know, they'll give them vouchers of things to pay for it at the store, and I don't know who who gets any kind of money for that, you know, but you have to, you have to assume that somebody is getting money for it, right? I wonder if, and this is just me speculating, I wonder if Nestle thought that, you know, if they could generate enough need, desire, or want in those countries for the formula, that somehow there would be some kind of government program that would oversee it, that would you know, would help with it and Nestle would somehow get profits from that. Like, I don't know. But there had to be an end goal because you had to know that these women were not going to take their less than $10 a week to feed a family and buy baby formula. That wouldn't even buy one can of baby formula. But it's really sad. A lot of babies died. A lot of babies were malnutritioned um, after this whole thing happened. Some people... Um, I think it was like Ireland, the Netherlands, like a bunch of comp uh, companies, countries even boycotted Nestle all the way into the 80s. Wouldn't even buy the candy, wouldn't do anything because they were so upset by what they had done. So tell me what you think about it. it it's shocking. I'd never heard of it before. This was like literally the first that I'd ever heard about it, but it was a thing. I researched it. It was a thing. So tell me what you think. Tell me what you think about the shortage now. Do you think it's just truly just what it is? It's just... You know they can't get they can't get the product they just can't get enough of the product in or do you think that there's more to it like some people are suggesting so talk to you soon bye